Hello, Nuggets. Okay, so um, I think I mentioned in one of the previous videos that I was seeking out new ways to write um, to try and improve my speed. I was doing the speed writing test. I noticed I just used the word was. I don't know, I've just been off it for a while. I wrote myself into a corner, I bet, which I knew was going to happen. So the idea was that I just get an outline, a log line for, for a premise for a, for a movie, and then just start fucking writing. No beat sheets, no index cards, just start writing. And it was going great up until I think I'm up to about page 47 or something like that. Maybe 50, but but now I'm in a corner and I don't like the story anymore. It's like, oh, I keep doing the same thing. Anyway, so that's what I was doing. So, but I'm seeking new ways to write. Okay, so I had an idea for how to try and write something. And it's going to be a play. Because uh, I love writing plays. I find it liberating. It's really exciting. It's really enjoyable to do. I mean, this is all tied in with the fact that I had a reading of 10 pages of my play. And it went really well. Uh, second draft delay. And every reading goes well there. So there's no such thing as bad. Everyone's kind. So who knows? But still, it had an impact on me. So I'm working on this new idea for a play, okay? It's an idea I've had for a while. And I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, okay, how can I write this? What will I do? Will I do my normal thing, which is sit with it, meditate on it, develop the story in my head. I don't do index cards and stuff. I do synopses, though, a synopsis or a premise. Develop it that way and then write it. Or am I going to try a new method? The speed writing isn't working out so well, so I don't think I'm going to do that. So I had another idea. And I think I might try it for this one. This is going to be hard to explain. What I think I'm going to do is once I've developed the characters, which I'm in now, I have to make it. I've got to mention about the characters, by the way, male and female characters. But let me get back to that. What I'm doing right now is developing the characters. And I have a premise for what I want the play to do. I also have an ending. I didn't think about it too much, but it's, it's in my head already. What if when I'm writing it, I write every line of dialogue purely as exposition of what the purpose of that line is, right? So line one would be, I'll give you, what's the character's name? Ben, for now, right? So line one would be Ben saying, this is the bit where I lay the groundwork for why we're all in this room together. And then character Cassie says, this is where I support you in us telling us that and I make it clear that I'm kind of in love with you and I find you admirable. And then Stace says, this is the bit where I show I'm disagreeable. Like literally every line is literally just a description of why that line's in the script. Because I do believe every line needs a purpose, right? It needs to have a purpose. And I'm thinking, what if I try writing that? And then I go back through and... I take every line and now I have the purpose of the line. I just don't have the character of the line. And I develop it into the character. Now, some of those one lines will become five lines, might become a page where, you know, if it's a particularly complex emotional, complex point they're trying to make in my, um, what should we call it, exposition script, that will be one line. But in the actual play, it might be a page, right? So my exposition script, I think, would be very short. You know, I don't know how short, I have literally no concept how this works. But it would be pretty short, but then if I do, when I do the pass, the character pass, where I actually get them to express themselves and I show the characterizations, that's going to expand the script. I wonder if that will work, or I wonder if I'll get bored of it. Uh, I don't know, but I'm still trying to figure out a way to write quicker, to actually complete shit. I've had this problem, I remember my brother... Oh my God. So I went to stage management college uh, when I was between 19 and 21, I think. That's how old I was. God, my memory's so bad. But between 19 and 21. And I do remember meeting up with my brother for lunch. He was working in Soho. He still works in Soho at uh, an agent's. Um, I think he was with Lou Coulson at the time. And I met him for lunch and I told him, I feel like dropping out of college. I don't know if I want to do this anymore. And I can't remember what it was. I was 19, 20. It was some stupid emotion. And Sean said to me, he's only like four years older than me, so he was probably 25 at the time, 24, 25. He said to me, Adam, you need to finish something in your life. 
I feel like he still needs to tell me that because I still have the same problem. I mean, maybe everyone does, but I still have that problem where I don't finish things, you know? And I'm, I'm really actively trying to resolve it because it doesn't work for a creator. You can't do that. You have to finish shit. As a writer, an act, whatever the hell you're doing, you have to finish the shit. And I don't finish things. Or when I do finally finish something, if I find, I, I, I put all of my energy is in that thing. So if it doesn't hit, I feel broken. Like if I, I finished writing that play and I sent it out, and I got some good responses and I got some negative or no response to it. Because I don't finish anything and I finally did finish it, I had so many eggs in one basket. I had so much of my emotion and spirit into this script that it's do or die. And you just can't go through life like that. It's exhausting. I can't sustain that. I need to have multiple things so that if, some, if something doesn't take, if someone reads my script and doesn't like it, it doesn't matter, I got 10 more. You know, or I'm on to the next thing or whatever it is. Right now, that's not the case. Laura wants to get me an agent for writing and I'm tentative and I'm, I'm cautious as I always am. And I know I, I really need these things in order. I need, I want to have a, a TV pilot. I want to have a play and I want to have a movie. Now, here's the thing. I already have all of those things, but I don't like the movie very much. It's not very good. I wrote it a few years ago. It's, that, it's okay. It's just not makeable. Uh, I wrote it with my writing partner, Jarrett. Um, and it's okay, but I'm a better writer now and I don't think it's ready. So I'm tentative and I'm like, okay, so I need another script. I need a makeable script, a cheap drama or comedy that someone can read and go, yeah, we could make that. You know, they can't do that with the other script. It's too expensive. So in order to have those things for her to go find me an agent, I need to finish something. And I keep starting these scripts and not getting through them, starting in scripts and not getting through them. I just did it with this fucking speed writing thing. Although I haven't give up, given up on it, I'm a bit lost on it. I don't know what to do next. So here we go again with a play. I'm just like, I think I'm talking myself out of this in this video about doing this exposition script. But maybe I'll find the method. Every time I read about writers, they all seem to have their method. Like they had a quest. At some point, they succeeded in their quest to find the thing that works for them. I spoke to a writer, I don't remember where I met her, but she writes young adult stuff and she's successful. And she told me that her method is that she has to get up at five o'clock in the morning and she goes to, I think, Starbucks or a coffee shop, or whatever. But she literally wakes up, falls out of bed, grabs her laptop and walks out of the door before she can see anything. Like she has to sleepwalk herself into writing and then she can sit down and write and she'll write for four hours and she'll get it out and she can go home and carry on her day but if she doesn't do that she doesn't write so there must have been a period where she didn't know that and she was seeking the answer you know and that's i think where i'm at i'm seeking the answer i'm seeking the method that attaches for me and allows me to write with diligence and complete stuff so the next one in this shit show is Exposition script. So anyway, that's what I'm going to work on. I wanted to mention uh, something about characters. I haven't thought this bit out, so I don't know what I'm going to say. But So I'm writing characters, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six people in this play. And it's three men and three women. And it's about a company sports team, like a softball team or a football team. Um... And it's a mixed gender sport, right? So it's a sport where, you know, men and women are completely equal and play in it together and all the rules determine it. That doesn't, that part of it doesn't really matter. The point is it's mixed gen. And I noticed something while I was doing the characters. And I think this ties into what I was saying in my video yesterday, yesterday about me being condescending and patronizing towards women with the best intentions. Um, when it came to writing the bios for the men, I had no problems. The archetypes were there. I understood that person. I, look, I, I thought of someone and I went, I know what that is. And I wrote it. It just came out. When it came to writing the women, it was like a blank book for me. I opened my mental book for, okay, what about this woman? And it was either a man with a woman's name, right? Or it was this, fuck, this is hard to admit, but this it was this... It was this very empty person. 
You know, it was someone who didn't have any substance. And what's wrong with me? Because when I see a movie written by a woman, they seem to have no problem writing men. I, I mean, really, I, I can often, you can often tell, no matter what anyone says, I think you can often tell when a script is written by a man or a woman. There are differences with, between the way they approach things. Not always, but there are often differences, right? But in general, I don't find that the problem with women writers is that they write superficial, empty men. In general, that I just don't find that. The men are full and complete as they are in anyone else's script, in a male script. It doesn't make any difference. I don't think that's true the other way around. I think very often men write empty, superficial women roles. Not always. What did we, we just watched something on Netflix with Adam Driver and Noah Boom Bam. Bum bum. <laughs> Check his name up. Anyway, a marriage, a marriage story or a marriage scenes from a marriage, something like that. It's a great, great movie. Uh, Adam Driver and uh, Scarlett Johansson in it, um, and he did a really good job. All of the characters were all flushed out. He wrote, he writes women very well, um, and he writes the men very well. He writes characters very well. Right? It's a really great movie. You should see it. Oscar Paz. Um, but in general, I think that a lot of male writers don't. And I fall into that category at the moment. Um, I used to think, naive me used to think, well, just write a man and, and give it a woman's name. Thinking that was enough because that's when I was just plot driven. When my writing was just about plot, I didn't think it really mattered. I think action described character and that's enough. And a lot of people still say that. It's not entirely true. It's not. The way they speak and the way they express themselves is extremely important. And if you're writing in a play then it, you'd have to do that. They have to express themselves in an authentic manner. And I've realized I'm not very good at it. And I don't quite know how to fix it. My first play is a two-hander. It's two men. The, there is a woman in it, a recording of a woman's voice, and it's a, it's a superficial thing. It's fine for that because it's supposed to be superficial. right? The whole point is it's just an empty voice, which is very telling about my problem as a writer. I wrote a play where the woman is just like, it's just... It's just a high-pitched voice. That's all we need. And fuck if that's not how I write at the moment. And I don't know what to do about it. I'm, I'm, I mean, maybe this is something you just have to work the problem, right? Maybe acknowledgement that I have this issue as a writer. And I just need to spend more time and slow down and say, this is the problem you have. You need to do it. I don't know. Maybe I need to mix with more female writers. I've talked about potentially writing, starting a writer's group. And we have Laura and those two people who'd want to be involved, possibly be involved, who are both writers. And I have another female writer. I know a lot of female writers. Here's the thing. I know a lot of female writers. So maybe in that room, they can help me get over that. But it's going to be hard because they're not going to understand it because they don't have that problem writing men, I don't think. I don't know. I might be making a lot of assumptions here. Anyway, I've got three men and three women in this script. Three men are very well flushed out. And the three women are very well flushed out if they were really men. So I don't know how to get to the, the core of their gender, of who they are as women. Because I don't necessarily understand those stuff. I empathize with it. I sympathize deeply with it, right? And I understand the human nature of people and the problems they go through. But the specific perspective of a woman towards these problems... I am alien to. I don't know it. And I need to fix that as a writer. It's not good enough. Anyway, that's it. Fuck. All right. Place called Team Meeting. Hopefully I'll actually go somewhere with it rather than just be another one. Tomorrow I'm going to make a video about, hey, I found a new way. I'm going to write an entire play with my dick. All right. Bye, Novitz.